Georgia is ready for Atlantic Coast Conference basketball. For the first time since 1989, the tournament has moved off of Tobacco Road. And here in Atlanta, for the first time ever, the tournament will be played inside a dome. And every available seat will be filled. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Hogwood. And we welcome you to Raycom and Jefferson Pilot Sports coverage of this 48th annual Atlantic Coast Conference basketball tournament. What do you say we head inside the dome? where over 40,000 people will be here to watch today's games. And we've got four of them. You can see them all from the opening tip till the champion is crowned right here on Raycom at JP Sports. Our first game today, the tournament's top seed, North Carolina, playing the Clemson Tigers. And the Tar Heels led by Joseph Forte. 23.7 points per game in ACC competition. He's the ACC scoring leader. But North Carolina upset earlier in this season by those clips and tigers should be a good game to get us started here today now let's send it down to our game announcers for game one two guys who have seen a lot of great acc tournament games over the years tim brand and billy packer all right mike thanks so much all the way down here on the floor billy you look around this cavernous arena and you say 40,000 fans now you've been involved i know as a player as a broadcaster 41 years did you ever think it would get like this well, I really didn't, Tim. Uh, when you take in consideration, this is the granddaddy of all the postseason tournaments. There'll be more people watching here today than all the people put together that saw the first tournament. So it's an amazing spectacle. North Carolina and Clemson going to be tough for Clemson to come back after their late game last night and playing one of the favorites, obviously. Let's talk about North Carolina first. Joseph Forte, special player and does so much for the Tar Heels. Well, he really is, Tim. He's about as silky smooth as any player that this league has ever had. Led the league in scoring this year, but you know what? Clemson has really been a team that's held him down. He was 6 for 19, only had 16 points in a loss. He's 10 for 31 this year against Clemson, so not up to par for Joseph Forte, but he can move so well without the ball. An unselfish player. Here we sit and see him hitting Brendan Haywood on the inside. One of the premier players in the league, if not in the country. You talk about superstars. How about for Clemson, Will Solomon? sensational player when you take in consideration so much is expected of him and he knows that he's got a score for this basketball team had five threes and of course the 26 points in the win against north carolina that kind of performance will be necessary again today if clemson's going to stay in this ball game he had only 13 points last night we just talked to him a moment ago he says i'll be firing from long range today and i suspect he will adam allen's back he will play today did not play last night he's had back problems that has to help clemson it really does he has six double doubles on the year but he's played very infrequently due to injuries. It'll really help Hobbs and Henderson inside if they can get some quality minutes out of a young guy that I thought was going to be one of the premier big men in the league. All right, partner, the bands are playing. The teams are warming up. We're just about set. It's North Carolina and Clemson. Coming up, we'll have the starting lineup for you right after this. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Bank of America, by Food Lion, by your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers, by Budweiser, by Comfort Inn, by Alto, by Dodge, and by Pepsi. inside the Georgia Dome. 40,000 people expected for the ACC quarterfinals. We're just about set for the first game here this afternoon. North Carolina and Clemson. Clemson beat the Tar Heels just about three weeks ago. They played last night, Billy. How tough is it to come back after the late game last night? Well, I think they'll be playing on fumes. That was a terrific win against a Florida State team, evenly matched up, and I think it a, a big win for Clemson. One of the things that'll be so interesting to me, though, Tim, is to be North Carolina, how much vengeance will they have realizing they were knocked out of not only the league outright championship by Clemson, but also number one in the nation at the time. Well, let's take a look at the Haviland starting lineups. We'll tell you who the participants are. First, for the Tigers of Clemson, Chris Hobbs, Juan Clifton, and Ray Henderson. We did tell you that Allen's back will play at center, and the seven foot one will help them a lot at the pivot also for the Tar Heels of North Carolina they have not changed much Lang, Capel, Haywood, Joseph Forte we talked about and of course Ronald Curry at the point he's been a little erratic but he needs
needs to have a good game at the point and a good tournament for the Tar Heels. Right now, let's take you across court to Gil McGregor. Hey, Gil. Thanks a lot, Tim. You know, you sit with Billy Packer, one of the great guards in ACC history, but this game today may be decided by the big people. Chris Hobbs, freshman out of East Chapel Hill High School, goes against Carolina. First ACC tournament for him. How will he stack up against Brendan Haywood? He fouled out in Chapel Hill, had a good game in Clemson, but Haywood, second team all ACC, may have something to prove. We're going to tip it off, and when we come back, we're going to see one of the best scores in the last two years in the ACC. Clemson's Will Solomon, ACC tournament coming up next. Atlanta Coast Conference basketball. Five months of sweat and hard work have been the prelude to this weekend's grand prize, the ACC tournament title. There have been last-second game-winning shots and amazing plays throughout this season. But victory only comes when one team raises that championship trophy overhead on Sunday. Teams have had their eyes on the prize while they remember their past triumphs. Like everyone before it, this season has had an emotional mix of highs and lows, excitement and disappointment, and it won't be any different here in the Georgia Dome. These are the faces of the most tradition-rich and storied college basketball conference. The players who step onto the court this afternoon follow in the footsteps of some of the great players in the history of the game. And backing them up are some of the most loyal and fired-up fans in the nation in a conference where battle lines are drawn every day. North Carolina and Duke have set the standard once again in the regular season, but there have been some serious challenges to the ACC basketball throne, and the fight to wrestle away control of the conference's top prize begins right now. Welcome inside the Georgia Dome. 40,000 fans have gathered for the 48th annual ACC tournament. We're all set. One of the favorites, North Carolina, the Tar Heels, ready to go against the Clemson Tigers, the ninth seed, which won last night by two against Florida State to get into this point. Tim Brand, along with Billy Packer, are all set to go. The officials, Larry Rose, Steve Gordon, Jamie Lucky, and Carolina will have it first. Check out this defense. Uh, Clemson used the triangle and two, with Forte and Capel being guarded man-to-man. Uh, -man. And then three players play in the zone. See how North Carolina attacks. Well, Carolina attacked it with Lang the first time. 2-0 Tar Heels. And Lang did not score in that loss against Clemson, down at Clemson. So that certainly takes him off what was a bad streak. I'm sure Matt Doherty reminded him of that. Here's the fight for the ball. Curry comes up with it, pushes it hard. Nice pass ahead to Forte. Great extension on that layup by Forte, even though it didn't go. He's wide open. This is beyond the arc. It's the three. He won't miss many of those. Ray Henderson with the rebound. Ahead they go to Hobbs, and we're tied. Terrific job by Clemson to attack a little bit and show that they're going to go ahead and try to push this ball up the floor when it's available. Inside they go to Haywood. That's a mismatch right now. Haywood against Henderson. Well, particularly in a triangle, uh, Tim, where they're down in there in the triangle zone. He ought to be able to get better help than Solomon off to a good start. Solomon for the three. At five threes, five out of 12 threes in those 26 points he scored against North Carolina at Clemson. Boy, Haywood misses everything, didn't he? Just throws up a brick. Edward Scott will push it. He's a talented young player. Kicks it back out to Juan Clifton, and that's for three. Clemson is not in awe of North Carolina. And playing with a lot of confidence and smiling every time they hit a shot and come back down the court. Now watch Solomon on Forte. He's playing a man-to-man. -man. The other three guys are down in the zone. Clifton on Capel. North Carolina going inside against this triangle. They're going to leave Curry wide open for jump shots. He's got to be ready to take it. Curry is not a great shooter beyond the arc. Certainly has been erratic. Here it is. He goes inside to Haywood, who turned his back, and now turned around and hits the jumper. You're exactly right, Tim, and you notice that Haywood just had that periphery vision there to see that the ball was not going to be shot, but rather passed, and was able to pick it off. Billy, in the first meeting between these two, that solomon Forte matchup, Solomon took it personally. Here's Curry with the layup. He may not be a good jump shooter, but Curry, with his power, really is a good slasher to the basket. Nice job by Forte to give it back to him. We're tied at eight. Henderson has to make himself more available for the ball because what Haywood's trying to do right now is play a one-man zone down inside. Tough shot by Clifton. And 
the foul is going to be on Henderson. Here's a look at Larry Shiat. He was given a vote of confidence last week by athletic director Bobby Robinson. And, and Matt Doherty has done an outstanding job this year. He won his first 11 games in the conference, then went two and three to finish. Really hard on himself, Matt Doherty. First rookie coach ever to win outright or a tie for the regular season championship. So quite an accomplishment. He's he took good talent, got it to play well. Peppers has checked in now for North Carolina. Here's the foul on Hobbs. No That'll question. be his first. No question for the freshman right there committing a foolish foul, even though Lang had decent position. If you're going to put your hands all over his back, but the referee right there, you have no chance not to get called for the foul. Thomas Nagis, the 6'8", 235-pound sophomore from Lithuania, will check in for Ray Henderson, who was having a tough time with Haywood. Nagis had a pretty nice game last and taking some quality minutes on the floor last night against Florida State. Cable. Scott comes up with a rebound. Pulls up for the jumper and hits the two. Well, I really like that on the break. And Scott is very good at that. He has an excellent hesitation dribble. Sometimes he's palming the ball. But to pull up and take that short-range jumper with the defense going back is a good move. They leave Lang alone. So, so far, the triangle has worked in that regard twice. Haywood missed everything, and Lang misses his jump shot wide open from the top of the key. Clifton had both eyes on the ball, never did see Lang. Runs into him and draws the personal foul. To me, everybody is aware of the 47-0 streak uh, at Carolina that Clemson has, but also in the ACC tournament, they faced them 12 times and have won one game. Seven times they had to play Carolina seeded number one. Of course, they never won any of those games. So this has been kind of a drought for Clemson over the years against this opponent. Forte ties the score at 10. Straight man-to-man -man by North Carolina. Really, the matchup that's really fun to watch is Forte and Solomon. Put hands on each other. They're trying to rub each other off on both ends. There's some pushing on the inside. There's Hobbs again. He had the cheap foul down on one end, picks up the second one. So there you have a big man that Clemson needs on the floor with two cheap fouls early in this ballgame. Capel having a few words with him. Capel may have been shaken up there. Still trying to move that arm around. Got stung a little bit. Well, you know, Hobbs is uh, well documented. North Carolina was his choice of schools and was uh, put on the back burner. Nice jumping by Solomon. He's going to let Forte know about it, too. Nice pass to Lang. And Carolina leads by two. As I said, Curry, a very good slasher to the inside. He's got quickness, he's got a lot of strength, and he's fearless. Carolina picks up the pace defensively now. Solomon. Back to Scott. this Clemson team is playing right now, you wonder, you say, well, you know, this is a pretty good basketball team to be in the position they are in terms of wins and losses. I mean, they're doing a solid job out there so far. Solomon with a double pump and finally throws the ball out to McGee's, but during all that was called for a three-second violation. How about the pass to Lang? It's Carolina by two. Clemson starts out in this basketball game with a lot of confidence. Solomon hits the three from the outside over the outstretched hands of Forte. Clifton comes right back and hits a wide open three on a good kick out. And this is a young basketball team that seems to be playing with the confidence that they left at Clemson with the win. And here's that play I talked about with Scott. Instead of trying to penetrate inside, pulls up, freezes Curry for the jump shot. So far, Clemson has two threes in this game. They're two away from their all-time record of 240 threes on the year. Billy, you talk about this being a young team. Here's our first look at Tony Stockman, who has just checked into the ball game, top freshman scorer in the league, and he is exciting every time he touches the ball. Carolina ball with a lead of two. In the Clemson win, he had four of nine threes for 16 points down at Clemson. So a good ball handler. And again, one of those guys that is not going to be intimidated by this North Carolina basketball team or probably this dog crowd. Here's the turnover. Here's Stockman. Stockman takes it in the paint. What he does best is pass. Here's Solomon. His shot is short. Gets it back. No excuse.
excuse for that. Capel, the bigger man, could have been in a position to get that offensive rebound. Ugly shot by Stockman, and Carolina comes back with it. Interesting about Stockman, he's missed his first three shots in 10 of the 16 games he's played in in the conference. You know, didn't that almost look like it was too nonchalant to be a shot? I mean, his early shots don't look like they have a lot of concentration. It's like he's got to warm up. Here's Capel with a nice shot for two and a four-point lead. Well, with Forte out of the game, Solomon switches over to Capel, who has too much size on him and shoots right over the top of him. Scott goes around Morrison. Here's the pull-up jumper for two. Nicely done. Terrific job by Scott because Morrison had him in tough shape over here on the sidelines. Nobody moving to the ball. He just took it upon himself to go one-on-one. -on -one. 14 minutes to play in the first half. North Carolina and Clemson. It's 14 to 12 Tar Heels over the Tigers, and here's a turnover by Julius Pepper. So that's the second turnover for the Tar Heels. One thing I would say about North Carolina, they are not coming out with a type of intensity that you would expect when you take in consideration that their opponent today took away an awful lot of what North Carolina had going. They broke an 18-game streak. They knocked it out of the number one position in the country. You could say this is the game that prevented North Carolina from winning the title outright regular season, and it may take away a, an opportunity for a number one seed. You would think these players would come out today with fire in their eyes to want to take this game over immediately, but they're not doing it. We had a look at Forte and Lang on the bench, getting a little breather. This is Morrison now working on Scott. Uh, we'll give Matt Doherty some credit on, on one thing. You don't want your team to leave it all out, assuming that you're the kind of club that can get to an ACC tournament final. A lot of times, you know, you're just trying to work over a three-game stretch and not worry about one game being all or done. I think Matt Doherty feels what you do. He was jumping up and down on the sidelines trying to get some enthusiasm, and they forced the turnover. And here's Solomon again, moves so well without the ball, but Curry does a great job fighting over the top, making the angle of the pass tough. Good defense by North Carolina. Curry pulls up for the jumper, air ball, followed by Peppers is good. Perfect pass. And that's what you say in the locker room at halftime. <laughs> Way to get open on that pass, but it really was a shot. <laughs> McGee's is fouled by Peppers. We'll see that pull-up jump shot by Curry. He pulls it up. He doesn't even see Peppers. No, no <laughs> Peppers, it's, it's hard to miss him down inside, but a good job by Peppers. Just as we talked about Haywood concentrating on the pass earlier in the game, Peppers did a good job not turning his back on that play. Matt Doherty substituting quite often here early in the ball game as Forte comes back in. A whole host of guys come in along with Adam Boone. Lang's back in as well. And I would say what we're seeing by Matt Doherty right now is to say, you know what? We belong in the championship game. I want my team rested and ready to go in that game. Uh, pretty good strategy on his part. Really, you hear so much talk coming into the tournament. Here's Henderson's shot. Draws iron, but you hear so much talk from all these people here. Everybody seems to think the Maryland Terrapins have the precious legs coming into this tournament. And a good attitude as well. I think that the way they played at Duke and the way they finished up at Virginia, about as good as any team has played two games this year in the league. Certainly coming down the stretch. Oh, great. There's another one of your great passes. And Max Owens with his first basket. Two perfect shots from a pass standpoint that were horrible air balls. Carolina with its largest lead, 18 to 12 over the Tigers of Clemson, 12-24 to play in the first half. Coming up right after this game, round three of Georgia Tech and Virginia. The Yellow Jackets won both games. Sean Fine hit a three that just beat the shot clock in the final minute of the five-point win in Charlottesville. And then Tony Akins had 19 points in the six-point win at the Thriller Dome. So stay with us for the ACC quarterfinal action here on the Ray Common Jefferson Pilot Sports Network. And traditionally, that game is always one of the best in this tournament, the four and five seed. They always seem to match up so well. Well, I think uh, not only is that an outstanding game with a lot riding on it, particularly for Georgia Tech in terms of an NCAA seed, they almost need one more victory, you would think. And, and also, uh, I think tonight, the, the Wake Forest-Maryland game. I mean, how many times does a league have a game of that impact in a first round of a tournament? I That's mean, like it, an NCAA it, tournament absolutely. game. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the quality of those two teams could be a regional final in the NCAA tournament. Nice defense by North Carolina Forte off the front. Of the and misses the dunk. That's the third dunk 
like we've seen him on a breakaway miss this year. Well, McGee's was right behind him, and that was an unusual looking dribble, but McGee's did have his ball on his hand on top of the ball. Forte certainly felt pressure from McGee's coming behind him. 18 12 Tar Heels, 11 51 to play first half. Solomon's shot draws iron. Here's McGee's again. He's open for the jumper. It hits wow! Him. Two big plays. You know what's most interesting about these two teams in their matchup is that Clemson, who normally gets out-rebounded on the year, has out-rebounded North Carolina in both games. They have an edge on North Carolina in what should be a dominant position for the Tar Heels. Adam Boone comes off the bench for the Tar Heels to hit a three. Solomon dribbles into trouble. Henderson has his shot partially blocked, but gets the shooter's roll. His first bucket. Pretty good power move on inside with a great shot blocker. He was right on it. One thing about the Tigers, they are very young, but not intimidated by the Tar Heels. Not at all. I think they gained an awful lot of confidence, obviously, in that victory down at their place. You can see the wide-open jump shot available for the big men. Henderson with the foul. Good dish inside by Forte. And one of the things about Forte that I really like is his unselfish nature as a player. And he's not off to a big start scoring-wise, but he's hitting what's available on the inside. Billy, these will be the free, first free throws by either team here in this ballgame. Right. Look at the numbers on Forte. Great article yesterday in the Washington Post about Joseph Forte and his brother Jason, who will be going to play at Brown, but more specifically about their mom who got him out of here uh, in, in Atlanta, and they were in a tough situation, came up to Maryland, played for Morgan Wooten, and both uh, have developed quite nicely. Chris Lang shooting just over 50% at 51-7 on the year. Big guy, uh, of course, suffered through injuries last year, solid this year, but that's one aspect of his game with the nice release he has, should be a lot higher. Lang now has five points. It's Carolina 22, Clemson 16, 10-54 to play in the first half. Back inside the Georgia Dome, 22 to 16. Carolina leads Clemson, 10-54 to play in the first half. Look at this, Billy. Well, those five buys in there are also important. No longer the situation now with a play-in game available. Everybody has got to play at least three games to be the champion in the league. And in some cases, we saw with NC State a couple of years ago, you almost had an opportunity for somebody to win four. And you go back to those years when only one team got in. Wow. Will Solomon, one three-pointer. We saw that early. Been rather quiet since. Well, he has to work so hard to get the ball. North Carolina certainly aware of him. And he could really use some inside scoring threat to open some things up for him. Here's McGee's top of the key. Nice pass to Scott. Scott way up in here over Haywood. Excellent movement without the ball by Scott. Made a little backdoor cut and arch that ball over Haywood was a tough job. He's got a nice game going with six points. Again, North Carolina really going inside against this triangle in two, and Haywood and Lang doing a nice job. That's seven now for Lang on the inside. As I said, he was scoreless against Clemson in the loss. Just feels like he can take it any time down low. And see if Clemson can get anything going inside. Clemson did not look in at all in spots. He was wide open on the inside. That ball was partially blocked by Haywood. Four tail run. He's got Haywood on the left wing, but he'll take that one himself. Allen's back in the ball game with the rebound. Now, Allen's back did not play last night. He has fresh legs, but he's got a sore back, and he re-injured that back in the final regular season game against Florida State. But they need him today, Billy. Oh, they really do, and they need him to get something going offensively on the inside. When Solomon comes back in, which will be momentarily, he's got to go ahead and have something going inside to open up the outside shot. There's Stockton, second. As you said, Tim, his first one, usually not much of a shot. He kind of... Like a guy that uh, has got a practice ball on the first tee. You know, he takes just a lackadaisical <laughs> swing, gets ready for the second one, gets his mulligan. There's a turnover by Carolina. Stockman's three has made this a three-point ball game, and the Tigers now get the ball back as Solomon comes into the ball game. Well, do you have a question about today's ACC tournament action? Go online at theacc.com and submit your question following this game. The best one will be answered by one of our analysts. Oh, my. Theacc.com, the official website of the Atlantic Coast Conference. 
Look at the impact Lang and Haywood are having. But that's what I'm talking about there for Clemson. They've got to get something down inside so Solomon can get free. Everything right now are jump shots, nothing going inside, back out. McGee's had the ball and ran into McKnight. Ball goes out of bounds and they miss an opportunity. Again, when you've got a score this close and Clemson just down three, you want to go ahead and get a little better looks, give an opportunity for the ball to be touched at least inside. I realize that Alan Spock and, and, and the geese are not great scorers, but at least they've got to get a chance to touch it. Ball was kicked out of bounds by Solomon. There, 6 8. Reset the shot clock. All 35 for the Tar Heels. Good overplay by Solomon. Back door there by Forte. He's such a clever ball player. Here's Haywood with the follow. That's a good foul by Solomon. Make him earn it at the line. And he's not a good free throw shooter. Haywood just a 49% free throw shooter now. We'll have to earn those two. Now Carolina as a team shooting 66%, but Haywood and Lang, two guys down inside that are very important to them in terms of possessions. Both of them really having problems from the line. Although I will tell you this, he stepped to the line, throws a brick there, but stepped to the line at the end of that Duke game when he was fouled by Battier right. and just drilled him. Now, what was interesting is uh, he looked over to uh, Pat Doherty on that second one and said, should I miss this? Which was, you know, good question. Yeah, good question. A good strategy move. But, you know, when you shoot 50% like you you yeah, <laughs> you of the year, not like you're, uh, you know, some pure shooter out there saying, oh, well, coach, I can put it right where I need it. Four-point game, 840 to play first half. Matt Doherty very comfortable over there on that sideline with his team. Trying to get through this half just to get to the next one. But I have to tell you, so far, Billy, this is reminiscent of the game we saw 19 days ago where Clemson just hung around, played confidently, never did anything too spectacular, and at the end stole it. Well, let's face it. In this tournament as well as the NCAA tournament, the underdog starts to be, get some real confidence, and the pressure falls on that other opponent if you can stay in a game long enough. Here's Stockman again. Well, that ball was halfway down. Stockman keeping the ball alive with his dribble. Solomon's got to pull the trigger on that. Does. That, that's for three. That sets a new Clemson record for three-pointers in the year. This Clemson team gaining confidence. 25-24 Tar Heel. Curry, that's for three. Good follow-through by Curry that time. Normally he drops his hands. He stayed right with that and realizes that Clemson is allowing him to have all the jump shots he wants. That extends the lead to four. Hard pass off the shoulder of Solomon. This is for two. Great pull-up. He is so smooth. Right around Curry that time for the pull-up. Curry's a better defender than he showed there. You mentioned he had 26 the first game. He's got eight already. Here's Peppers. This game's starting to heat up a little bit. Well, you really like Julius Peppers. He comes in there. He understands what he can do. He's got a nice touch from that range. Probably the best touch of any of the big guys Carolina has. Very rarely do you see a defender try to take a charge against him. Hobbs is fouled. The bucket will count. Very good pass on the inside by Clemson. As I said before, if they can establish a little inside game, they can really open things up for Solomon. Good job by Solomon hitting down inside. Peppers was overplaying, but didn't have the angle. Look at that pass. Right on the money. Good job by Hobbs. So Hobbs goes to the line. He's a 71% free throw shooter. He's the top freshman rebounder in the conference. That's kind of interesting, the connection between Carolina and Clemson with regard to Hobbs. Hobbs, as we mentioned, wanted to go to Carolina. Henderson, who had all those matchups with Jason Parker down in Charlotte High School playing at Clemson. Parker was the guy that was going to take that spot for Carolina, so Hobbs was overlooked. So now Henderson and Hobbs are both playing for Clemson. Jason Parker is at Kentucky. Billy, that's the second time that Geese has tried to take a charge on Peppers. No calls, but he's feeling the bruises. <laughs> Look at him rubbing his head. Oh, my. Here we see Will Solomon, as we mentioned last year, first team all-conference this year, just did miss it, is on his second team. Really lighting it up here in the first half and giving Joseph Forte all he can handle. Forte, as I mentioned, 10 for 31 so far this year against Clemson. Not off to a big night, and Solomon really doing the job for the Tigers. Now 
you can see Forte, one for five. So that makes him 11 for 36 against Clemson so far this year. You know, Tim, one thing I will point out that's a lot different uh, than the ACC tournament. Could you imagine back in the days when it was one and done and you were not going to the NCAA if you didn't win the championship here? Could you imagine the difference in the intensity on this North Carolina team? Without a doubt. I mean, they know now, not only are they going to get in the NCAA tournament, but they're probably going to be at the worst, the number two seed, and they can afford to take on this game this way. But uh, in those days, back in, this, in the early 70s, when you had to win this tournament to go all the way, man, the pressure in this game would be starting to build already. Well, the officials, Larry Rose, Steve Gordon, and Jamie Lucky, draw a mixed cheer after that, uh, that call. Well, we've seen them let the charge block call go so far in this game, particularly those right underneath the basket. Nothing there for Cable. He's got to push it, too. He wants to get down by that foul line and look for a shot. Oh, nice pass. Braddock behind his back in the paint, kicks it to Solomon. Uh, any wise decision, he sees Haywood in there and said, I've got a decent jumper, but not over the seven quarter. Over Curry, he shoots it. Curry comes back with a rebound. Great crossover dribble by Forte. Nothing there. Good job by Braddock. Carolina by two. Forte gets it back. Sloppy pass. You really don't want to be sloppy at that, that close. Ahead to Stockton. Stockton looking to try to make something big happen. Wisely gives it up. He has gotten more control as the season goes on. Look at the penetration by Scott. We're tied at 30. I'll tell you, this is a tough matchup out there. Scott Stockton and Solomon can all handle that ball. And there's Haywood. And now finally, McGee gets a call. He's been hit three times hard. And that one is right in the eye. That is the second on Haywood, and Haywood now will plead his case while Nagis tries to put himself back together. Beautiful drive on the inside, and Haywood out of position to not be able to block it. Great crossover dribble. Leaves Curry standing there, and Lang can't come over for the weak side to help. Billy, how about the future of this ball club as you look at Haywood? But how about the future of Clemson? You've got Edward Scott as a sophomore, Solomon's a junior, Hobbs is a freshman. Henderson is a sophomore, and Stockman's a freshman. Here's Solomon. Yes! Yeah. I'll tell you what, they are giving Solomon some pretty good looks. And what he's doing is not putting the ball on the floor. He's shooting his jumper from the standstill. Capel answers for three. Solomon wants another one before the team gets back down court. Fires this one. He may be on the line. Oh, the he's got away with a push. He sure did. That's a two-handed push from the back. But this is a very confident Clemson team out here in this game. Right now, Solomon's feeling it, too, and he draws the foul. This is going to be called on Owens. Well, I really like what Solomon's doing right now. When he's got the open jump shot, he's taking it without the dribble. Then he sees a guy like Owens, who's not a great one-on-one -on -one defender, and puts it on the floor and goes by it. 33-33 with 440 to play in the first half. Look at this. Five for ten. That's not bad. Three for three for the Tar Heels. Again, see if Clemson will go inside. Just let the big guys handle it a time or two. Because they really have their outside game working. Well, Scott almost turned it over. Here's Allen's back. Working against Haywood. Nice. Nice. See, the ball goes inside. They get a little action going in there. The guys on the outside for their defense have to at least turn their heads. And boy, you turn your head on Scott Stockman or Solomon, and something good will happen. You see Holland's block comes right across the lane. I really feel sorry for this kid. Uh, Tim, you know, the, the injuries, it was like lying last year. You know, he's got a lot of potential. I honestly thought when I first saw him come into the league as a freshman, that he could be one of the premier big men in the league. Oh, I know you were high on it. Injuries have really held him back. He you was originally... Just, really, just watch the way he shoots, and you can tell oh, he's, yeah. a, he's a talent. Originally recruited to go to Boston College by Jim O'Brien, part of that group of kids that, in effect, then went all around the country. O'Brien eventually left and went to Ohio State, and he's doing a good job with that team. Capel again beyond the arc. Oh, my. Now, what's going on right here is this. They were playing the triangle at two, and why Capel... Why they're guarding Owens and Curry, I don't know. Capel is the guy that we want to go ahead and stay with. Carolina by one. Scott left.
left alone. Boy, what a first half he's having. Now, Tim, watch that on the other end. They're playing the triangle of two, but the man they're guarding is Owens and Forte, which means Capel is wide open at the top of the key. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. This is a bad move by Clemson. The best shooters out there are Capel and Forte. You've got to play them with the two. Carolina has not missed beyond the arc. Five for five. Let's see if Clemson makes that adjustment the next time down the floor. See, Carolina's playing with one big man and really four perimeter players. 3.15 to play in the first half. It's a two-point game. We'll return after these messages from the Atlanta Coast Conference. Jason Capel finds himself in a situation where North Carolina only had one big man on the floor, and that was Haywood. Clemson is in the triangle in two. Initially, they were playing Forte and Capel. Now, what Clemson had to do was make the adjustment and say, hey, wait a second. Capel's the most dangerous scorer we have out on the floor other than Forte. Go ahead and stay in the triangle in two, but don't take your man off of Capel. Carolina five for five beyond the arc. Curry with eight assists. Here's the Jeep game summary, and it's a two-point ball game. And Tim, what we see right now is Lang came in for Haywood, so that North Carolina's playing with four perimeter players. So what you have to do is to say, okay, we're going to stay in the triangle, we're going to play Capel, and we're going to play Forte, which means that Owens has to become the primary shooter. But force Carolina to do that before you make the other adjustment. It's a small team that Carolina has out on the floor for them. Well, the Budweiser scoreboard, and there are a lot of games going on, but last night, how about this one? Florida State and Clemson, a lot of people thought, well, this is just a play-in game. It's not going to be exciting. Turns out to be a two-point ball game. Well, when you looked around the country last night, Arizona, a team that really is getting themselves back together, kind of like Maryland, uh, beating uh, Stanford on the road. Second loss for Stanford on the year, both of their home court. I thought that the Notre Dame loss was surprising from yesterday. Georgia, unfortunately, a team that was kind of a bubble situation, not getting out of the first round of the SEC tournament. There's the offensive foul called. Was this a charge? Yeah, why sure. not? Right in the torso. Absolutely. Right in the torso, the feet were planted, textbook. Now here's where Clemson has to adjust both offensively and defensively. Carolina's playing with, with a small team out on the floor, only Lang with size, and see how these adjustments take place. 3-10 to play in the first half. Tim Brandt and Billy Packer at the table, 39-37, Carolina. First of four games today in the quarterfinals of the 48th annual ACC tournament. Clemson is just by going just to the straight 2-3 zone, not the triangle in two. Clemson wanted an over-the-back called on Lang. There was none. Carolina gets it back. Curry to Forte. Oh, great baseline penetration by Owens, but can't finish. And now Clemson may be able to pick up some of that rebound advantage that they've had on the Tar Heels. I realize it was only one of the two games, but uh, they're in a better position now with Haywood out of the game. Braddock's got to pull that trigger outside. He's going in with the big guys, but scores. Terrific job and no weak side help again because Carolina playing just one big man. His first basket, the left-hander. Curry wanted that one, didn't he? Wide open. Forte makes it look easy. He's got that pull-up jumper from football 15 feet. Probably the best in the league. Tar heels by two. Job by Owens. Five second call on Solomon. He had nowhere to go. Hey, fans, score more miles with the Dividend Miles Visa card issued by Bank of America. It is your ticket to fly on U.S. Airways to ACC campuses and other destinations around the world. Apply today. Visit bankofamerica.com slash U.S. Airways. Henderson back in the ball game now. Solomon kind of laughing there, but that was an excellent call by the official. Solomon just took too much time with that ball. Decide to go to Capel. They double down on him and leave the jumper alone out front. There's the shot by Owens. He has five points, and Carolina leads 44-39. And that's the gamble that Clemson coaches had to take. With Capel getting hot, Owens, who also has the opportunity, and there's Stockton coming back. He's feeling it, isn't he? He looks over at the table and us. Clemson staying right with the Tar Heels. Capel again. Wow! was from about six steps beyond the three-point line. Cable four for four and feeling it. But well, when he stands out there, Tim, because of his
his size, he shoots over the guard. Solomon beyond the arc. Good go, yeah. <laughs> this is fun. And you know, everybody said, hey, they're going to be playing in the dome. The shooting perspective will not be that good, and they probably won't be shooting well outside, but that's not the case. Nice pass to Lang. The bucket will count. The foul is on Braddock. Boy, that shows you how strong Lang is. Braddock had that ball right down at Lang's waist, and Lang was able to pull it loose. Watch this. It was right at his waist. And with the power, he put it up. Ball kicks outside. There's Cape with that long three. That's four for four from three, all from about the same spot. That one probably about two steps farther back than some of the others. That's the worst part. Not only are they allowing the shot, but they're letting him take it in the same spot where he really feels it has the range. Well, give him some credit, too, realizing where the hole in the zone is, taking advantage of it. Lang makes it a five-point game. We're under a minute to play in the first half. Scott. One of his rare misses in the first half. Forte with the pull up. Beautiful job. Get it to go down. It just won't go down for him, but that was really good use of the screen. 29 seconds to play in the half. Shot clock is off. And Clemson will wait for the last shot. Wait for the last shot and maybe even think three, Tim. Get it within two. Solomon is going to be more careful now on the five second ball, but Forte not crowding. I, I would have the ball not in his hands. I'd want him to be the shooter, not the passer. He pinches his jump shot slightly. I thought it was better to have the ball in Scott Hands. Forte! Morrison! Wow, what an interesting and fun first half. Terrific first half. Larry Shia talking to Solomon there, and I really think that's what he had in mind. Get the ball in Scott's hand, let him penetrate, kick out for Solomon with a jump shot. Gil McGregor's here, Mike Hogwood's here, the whole gang's here with our halftime. That's coming up next. It's 50-45 Carolina. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by Chick-fil-A. By your local Jeep dealers. Comfort Inn by Haviland and by Dodge. Back inside, ready to start the second half, rebounding between these two clubs, just about even. Five-point differential in the score. Billy, how about the Dodge Keys? Well, a lot of times we talk about, uh, in, in the case of Keys, we talk about statistical keys, but I really think today it's emotional. I think for Clemson, they want to continue their poise in this basketball game. They've really done a fine job with their shot selection and not rushing things. And I think for North Carolina, the mental intensity is definitely not there. And Tim, you made a great observation watching Carolina come out to warm up. Their starting lineup was sitting on the bench. Somebody has told them it, it, that this is a situation where we're going to play three days, rest your legs. So the Buick Keys, I think, are going to be that of mental as opposed to statistical. From the Buick Keys, we go to Gil McGregor. You know what's very interesting? You talked to Coach Dart, and he didn't like the way his club rebounded. In fact, they gave up nine second chance points. So what's to do a better job? When I talked to Coach Shiat, he says he wants to force Carolina to take 25 threes. Doesn't matter that they're seven of eight, Tim. Back underway, just ready to go. Carolina leading by five. Here is Clemson with the ball. Scott had a strong first half. You're not going to believe this, but Carolina has come out in a triangle of two of their own. Kind of interesting. Taking a page out of Clemson's book, at least on that particular possession down floor. This ball made way out front. Very shy and not happy with it. Well, I don't think that Coach Shad is going to get Carolina to take 25 threes in the second half. They start with a big lineup. Lang and Haywood in there, and I think we're going to see North Carolina pound it down inside a lot more. There they go. Here's Haywood down low. Hobbs with three fouls. Curry left alone beyond the arc. His shot is iron. Now that Clemson will allow to have happen. Give Curry the wide open shot. Solomon beyond the arc. assists in that first half and he picks up a long rebound here the ACC tournament record for assists by a Carolina players 
Larry Brown. So that's how far that goes back. He has 13. Curry left or alone. 13. He didn't pull the trigger this time. Now, what do you want to do when he has that wide open shot? And there is Capel. Capel, you talk about records. There it is. Five three-pointers for Capel. What Curry needs to do when they throw that cross-court pass is put the ball on the dribble and go immediately at the defense to go ahead and create a passing lane instead of standing out there and not take the jump shot. Carolina with an eight-point lead. Eighteen forty-two to play. We'll return after this message from the ACC. Pride in achievement and setting the standard for academics and athletics is a trademark of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Hello, I'm John Swafford, recognizing the corporate partners who share with us the ACC's pursuit of excellence. Tall Tail, Bank of America, Buick, Chick-fil-A, Food Line, Pepsi, and Aquafina support the efforts of our student athletes and the ACC's outreach program. On behalf of the entire conference, thank you. Well, we're seeing Capo once again finding that spot right at the top of the key and stepping back and hitting the threes. Five for five threes. The all-time record in the ACC tournament for threes. Nine, Randolph Childress against North Carolina, the 95 final. The Childress set the all-time scoring record in this tournament, one of the great tournaments individually ever played. Six ties in this game, four lead changes. The Capers made the difference. 53, 45, far here. Solid with the crack. Pass to Henderson. You know, Solomon, on a, you know, a lot of times there are guys that are big scorers on bad teams, and that's where they belong. Solomon could be a big-time player on a good team. Boy, North Carolina really going inside. Good move on their part. Pretty nice rebound by Haas. Ball's going to belong to Clemson. Go! Go run out! You ever see that pass inside by Solomon? Great look. Henderson finishing off. Henderson, who had a very good game uh, last night, 15 points, 8 rebounds against Florida State. Solomon frees up and now draws company. Check this defense by North Carolina. There's Solomon again. Doesn't need much time to get that jumper off. Cable has a wide open opportunity down here. Curry doesn't get him the ball. How about that? Shot by Solomon, though, as a turnover by Clemson. Philly created his own space with a back dribble. He really did. And there's a case where Lang battling inside. Henderson did a real good job not banging against him. See, Lang pushes off right there and gets caught with the second push. 53-50 Tar Heels. Straight man-to-man -man now by North Carolina. Forte back on Solomon. Solomon frees up again. Corey will run. He's got Forte to the right on the wing. And here's Forte with the jump. Forte did not have a good angle on that shot. Clemson's got numbers. Scott off the front. Hobbs. Tough shot. Yes. Boy, that's a tough pull-up jumper there for a big guy. But do you see what happened here? Clemson's two big men beat North Carolina down the floor. It's a 7 nothing run, Billy, in a one-point game. Now, maybe that attitude Carolina has about playing three days is starting to come to catch him a little bit. They leave Curry wide open. Here's Capel again battling. He'll go to the line. And boy, Capel's made a difference in this game for the Tar Heels. He really has, and it's really an interesting thing, again, where you have the opportunity to know you're going to the NCAA tournament anyway to figure, hey, we're going to face Duke in the finals. You start thinking about all those games down the road you may play, and all of a sudden a game like this comes up and grabs you. It has really surprised me that the North Carolina players have not brought a lot of energy to this game based on what Clemson did to them the last time. Jason Capel, the 6'8 junior from Fayetteville, North Carolina, has now hit 70 of his 86 free throws this year. Really solid basketball player in all phases. You know, gives you a solid job defensively. Rebounds extremely well. Good shooter from the outside. Already seven above his average. And this is the second. You know, his assist turnover ratio is almost two to one. You know, as a forward, that's a terrific job. Again, the patience of having three guards in the lineup allows Clemson to handle the ball extremely well. And there's Stockton. 
He is fun to watch. Shot for that ball. Just a freshman. Just that little relaxing release of his. Here's Capel back up to the top of the key. He's wanting to pass out. Instead, Haywood draws a foul. Pretty good job by Henderson to pick up that foul. Once you give that kind of position to Haywood, you're better off fouling than when he just dunk the ball down inside. Haywood still not qualified to lead the league in field goal shooting percentage because he hasn't taken enough attempts in the game. Henderson has three. Hobbs has three. Foul problem starting to mount for Clemson. That's where Allenspach is, uh, can help them there with a couple of fouls and minutes on the inside. Curry again. Oh, they're right. They'll let him have it. Yep, they're letting him have that shot, and he has to understand to pick up the slack with the dribble. Solomon beyond the arc. He'd like to have that one back. Boy, would give him any looks like that that he doesn't bury. He's got a great release on that jump shot. Good crossover. And Curry goes down hard. Hey, hell no, don't do that. He used his hand and wrist. Uh oh. Are we going to call? I know Matt Gardy's furious. Henderson's that, walking Henderson through the sideline. That's game. a tactical. Yeah, tactical. Wow, that was a personal. That a is a huge call. Personal, so Henderson's out of the game. A huge call. Wow, that really hurts Clemson. As you know, this year that technical counts as a personal as well, so he picks up, in effect, two fouls, and he's out of there. This is a huge situation right now with 15.40 to go. Take another look at it, Billy. We see Curry goes on the inside. I don't know what that wasn't as flagrant as... Uh, well, he didn't call it a flagrant foul. I wonder if he said something. It had to be a verbal deal because it certainly wasn't a flagrant foul on the inside, but that technical call without any hesitation. I think it had to do with something verbal. Joseph Forte's money at the bank here. Forte will go, and then Curry will have an opportunity as well. Boy, that is a big, not only the points on the board, but to lose your top defensive player on the inside. Boy, that foul didn't look nearly as bad as I thought it was. I thought he had thrown him to the ground. No, he goes up there and tries to block the shot. Now, I don't know where the, uh, did he step on? Did he kick him? He must have been talking to him. Well, he didn't look like he did anything there at all. Nothing that we could see. But he is not going to play anymore in this game, and that's a big loss for Clemson. Curry at the line shooting two, and an opportunity for a four-point swing here for, uh, for North Carolina. And what I think Curry did a good job, I've been saying he ought to penetrate with the dribble because they're giving him the shots. This is now an opportunity for his seventh point, 10 assists in the game. 15.40 to play. Carolina extends its lead. But Clemson won't go away. Henderson's down the bench. Coming up next, ACC quarterfinal action continues. It's Virginia and Georgia Tech. That's coming up right after this game. Georgia Tech getting off the bus, coming into the Georgia Dome, roll in with a record of 16 and 11. Virginia, number 12 in the country, 20 and 7. That's coming up next after this game, number 4 and 5. And don't forget, the action continues tonight. Duke taking on NC State. Carlos Boozer still out, Billy. But the last game, I think, is the most interesting. Number 6. Wake Forest, and number three seed, Maryland. Let's go across the uh, court. Here's Gil McGregor. You know, Billy, you're right about the foul. It, it wasn't the technical on the foul, but after the foul was committed by Henderson, he had some words for the referee, and the words cost him being in this ballgame. <laughs> you're exactly right. Being in, but now out of this basketball game, a big loss for Clemson. Not only the points they gave up on that uh, foul and technical, but also they'll not have Henderson for the rest of the basketball game. McGee's hits a two. And it's 58-56. What's that mean? Boy, here you go with Owens. Yeah, Owens is really a valuable player off that bench because he's a guy that does have the pure shot, a lot of experience, and is capable of having the double-figure scoring game off the bench, probably the best of any of the Carolina players that can do that. Really, with Henderson gone now for the afternoon, that you would think that Adam Allensback's got to get some more minutes, but he's sitting over there in his warm-ups. Well, I don't know whether 
he's really capable from a conditioning standpoint to give him many minutes. Braddock, who made a good drive in the first half, can't get by with that one. This is knocked out of bounds by Capel. It'll be Clemson basketball. There's a look at Adam Allen's back, has that bad back. You know, Carolina's won 15 championships, and in those runs, only one time did they really have one of those tough games in the opening round that they eventually won. That's back in 75 with Pete Wake, 101 to 100, that overtime game and the famous pass, Bill Ford eventually becoming the most valuable player in that tournament. But other than that, Carolina's had their way in most opening round games. Billy, just four seconds, four seconds left on the shot clock, four seconds. Where's Solomon? He's being guarded by Owens. The geese has got to set a screen for him and doesn't get around to it. Here comes Solomon. He'll get this off. Just before the buzzer. Good job by Braddock. Stockman gets it back and pitches that shot. Should not have taken that shot, Tim. There he is. He's got the ball. A new shot clock going for his team. And nobody under the board can get a rebound. Big rebound by Haywood. This is Forte. He air throws ball. an air ball. Here's Cape. He has it blocked. The case with a great job. That almost was the third air ball jumper today that turned out to be the perfect assist for a teammate. Forte was not ready to shoot. A little off his game here today. Puts it up, air ball, perfect pass. As we said in the first half, Carolina had two of those, but ends up being perfect passes for layups. Brian Morse, Hayward. There's Clemson back in the more traditional zone now, the two-three zone. Inside the cable, back outside to Owens. Good ball move. Nothing there. Morrison probably got fouled. Hayward gets fouled. The bucket will count. And here's where Henderson is really missed. Not only from his size standpoint, but he's got it. He had enough whip in there to keep Hayward from getting down inside. Sixteen fouls. Morrison probably got hit on that. No call made. And there's Hayward with an excellent job on his part. Bob picks up his fourth. And Haywood makes the free throw. He looks pretty good for the foul line today. He does. And here's Alan Spock back in, and you talked about it at the top of the show, Jim, and it was a very important point. Can they get Adam to give them some minutes today? They never would have anticipated Henderson would be completely out with 15 minutes to go. And now Hobbs in foul trouble as well. Carolina matches its largest lead. Clemson needs a basket badly. Carolina back on the inside. Solomon tried to go up and dribble the ball. And uh, Solomon says, hey, ref, he held my arm. How about making that call? Take a look at it, Billy. See if he did hold his arm. No, I don't think so. He's I, saying I, he got I, his I, dribble I, down in time. That's what he's saying. And there you see the 2-3 zone. Clemson just trying to keep Haywood out of the action. But boy, when it goes inside, look at the good looks that sets up on the outside. Forte misses again. Clemson has not been the team that Forte has shown his normal skills against. You heard that slap. Solomon picking up the gun in his dribble. Really doing a good job picking up the intensity level and pushing it down on the inside. Juan Clifton checks into the ball game. Solomon will go out. He'll get a breather. It was 54-54 when Henderson made the foul and then the technical was picked up and now an eight-point swing. And really struggling offensively. Here's Scott. Just not getting good looks now. Well, what's happening right now is that Clemson losing a little of that composure that they had to kept them in this ball game. Inside to Haywood, back out to Forte. Good ball movement, they go. Forte, Allen Spock with a good defensive play there. Nice patience by North Carolina. Forte takes it all the way himself. Terrific job by North Carolina. Scott got poked in the eye. And there was a case where Forte just had enough patience of mind, realizing how the game was being defended. Goes right around the geese, and because Alan Spock was doing so much to try to hold down Haywood, there was nobody to help out. Carolina with its largest lead of the game. It's 66-56 with 12.34 to play. Now let's see if this young Clemson team can have the patience to stay in the game or if they try to get this lead back in a hurry. 
Defensive intensity, pick it up, Tim, you can feel it. They extend the defense, yep. and the geese is fouled by Forte. Good job by the Carolina players coming right out. The officials, maybe a foul on both. I think we're going to have a foul on two players here. I'll tell you this, the officials are taking absolutely nothing from the players, and there's a technical yep. foul. Double. Yeah, guys mouthing off on the inside. You don't see any physical banging. Right, the guys are starting to run their mouth, and the officials staying right on top of it. 12-17 to play. It all started with a foul on the inside. Now the players are going to be Owens and Clifton pick up the double technical. Again, it's it's verbiage. It's wordage. Yep. Right, to be no shots taken on that one. What a change in this ball game. Clemson had been playing so well and hanging with North Carolina. Henderson got his technical. He left. The game was tied. Carolina now starting to take over. And there we see the referees really taking over, too, not only in regard to the verbal language we're hearing out there, but really wanting to get this game under control before it gets a little wild. And again, Clemson has got to go ahead and regain their composure, get better shots. Jason Cable picked up his third. Here's the geese. He'll fire from way outside and hit it. Second pick to two. Well, you can see how much Clemson misses Henderson's big body down inside. Some open passing lanes now. Still a 10-point lead. Scott gives you all that motion with his upper body and then puts you to sleep when he eventually puts it on the floor. The geese over Cable hits ah, again. Three. Those are a couple of big buckets right there. That's they a two, are. Billy. No, I meant three of those jumpers that he's made here in his first half. Didn't mean to confuse you, Timmy. Morrison is fouled. I mean, when you, you're looking with Henderson on the bench, Solomon taking a, a brief blow before, and you're saying, where are some points going to come from? And the geese comes and hits three big jumpers. Well, Morrison now will go to the line for North Carolina, shooting one and one as Nick Solomon, who's been rather quiet the last five minutes. I really think now's the time for North Carolina to really start banging that ball down inside because uh, Hobbs sitting on the bench, the geese on the bench, Henderson out. They're really giving up a lot of size, and Hollinsbach, you know, is not going to be in the kind of condition to run up and down this floor very often. Great job by that young man there, hitting those three jumpers that'll keep his team in the game. Boy, Morrison, just a 59% free throw shooter, drills them both. It's 70 to 60, Carolina. Coming up next, number four versus number five. The seeds here at the Georgia Dome. Virginia shows up now with a record of 20 and seven. Nine and seven in the conference. And the Cavaliers coming in after that spanking they took at Cole Fieldhouse last week, looking for some vengeance. Tim, remember last year, North Carolina got knocked out the first round of the ACC tournament by Wake Forest, and at 52-58, uh, they lost uh, that game. Carolina went to the Final Four. Only one time before has a team from the ACC gone to the Final Four and lost in the opening round. That's Virginia back in 84. All the rest of the times, they've won seven national crowns, uh, the ACC teams have, and in five of those cases, they've all, the team that got to that national crown also won the ACC tournament. Biggest number that we just saw there, Billy, Clemson just one of five from the three-point mark here in the second half. Solomon one of four. Well, something had to give with the great three-point uh, three, uh, three shooting we saw in the first half. Clemson looks like it's running out of steam. Here's Morrison, puts the ball on the floor, and Peppers gets it back. Boy, don't ever leave the man with the ball. Oh, Pepper Day oh, with a shot. Pepper's just put a hand. <laughs> Look at Scott gives his smile. Scott, Scott's laughing. He realized it wasn't that big a blow, but you know, Peppers doesn't have to hit you very hard to put you down. Well, Peppers is 270. Scott's just 180. Yeah, we'll see it right here. Excuse me, and you see what happened here. Scott just went and flew to the floor as if he had been knocked there by a some kind of a block by Peppers. And he just laughed. The old forearm shiver from the defensive end. Clemson's got to get something going here. How about that? How about that? Carolina's all 
all-time leading shot blocker. He would pass Sam Perkins this year. Hudson turns it over again. Morrison, who's given some good minutes, gives it over to Forte, and he hits. Morrison doing a good job pushing this ball up the floor now. And I think that the Clemson guards are a little tired. The lead is 12. Allen's back with the turnaround. Whoa! Oh, and the fall away jumper for two. Boy, he really is straining out there, though, Allen Spock. Doesn't look comfortable at all on the floor. And the foul is called on Allen's back. Allen's back second. Uh, well, there's not much that could, you could do right there. Scott gets himself in a situation. He has to put up the shot, and he knows Haywood's down on the inside. Haywood just knocks it away. Haywood leads the ACC with almost four blocks per game. First Tar Heel with 100 blocks in a season. You see the free throw situation. And another one put in by Haywood. Well, we the talked reason about him early, Billy, and the stroke looks pretty good now. Yeah, and the reason for the big uh, difference in free throw shooting is North Carolina is going inside. Clemson really hasn't had an inside attack at all. The Sam Perkins was, and he was a four-year player, too. A lot of times you see school records for scoring, rebounding. Back in the days when guys only played three years, and, and uh, Sam Perkins was a four-year player, so you've got to give a lot of credit to what uh, Haywood has been able to do, beating one of the all-time great players in Carolina history in shot clock. Right now, he's just two below his average. He averages 12.7 rebounds a game. Good penetration by Scott this time and banks it in. Goes right by Morris. Now the Tigers have to make some stops. Look at how much room they're giving Curry. Staying away from 10, 12 feet on the jump shot he's got available. There he is. Look at they're just staying away from him, letting him have any kind of shot that he wants. How about Solomon on Forte over here? Those two are really there it is. Right. See, he has got to learn to pick up the slack. They're going to give him the jump shot. He's not going to hit it. He's got to get closer to the basket. Just take that away from the defense. Cross court pass to Solomon oh. for three. Got Morrison in the air. Morrison has a great vertical leap, but he had no reason jumping in the air. That was a tough guy shot. Morrison upset with himself that Solomon got that shot off, but Solomon, time and time again today, has taken his jump shot without the dribble and really froze in the defense. Kid's a good player. So Brennan Haywood goes back to the line. You know, we know uh, Alvin Jones will be playing uh, in the next game. Great shot blocker and and obviously creates uh, a lot of problems for the defense, but the fact that Awood has blocked more than Jones shows you how good he's been defensively this year. Awood smiles, I called that. He's now five for six at the line. Well, shoots under 50% on the year, but I guess when you're having the kind of day he has, uh, some of those are gonna roll in for you. Haywood came into this game hitting just 78 of his 160 free throws. And now he's six for seven. Lang checks back in for Haywood. And gives him a well-deserved pat on the hand in regard to good job, big fella. Haywood has been the difference here in the second half. Nine-point lead for Carolina. Last night against Florida State, Hudson shot 55% in the second half. There's Solomon again without wow. the dribble. Without Clemson the dribble. hanging around, Billy. They won't go away. That's a really great shooting technique when you can go ahead and freeze that defender by not putting the ball on the floor. McGee gets lost and Lang makes him pay. Boy, how, big, how big was that technical on Henderson? You yeah. no answer inside. Solomon got caught in the air. He's going to try another shot. Yep. As a one-on-one -on -one move by a big guy with nothing available underneath. It'll always hurt you. Good defense on Forte. That cable left alone. That's where he's been hitting him. He's got three more. Boy, and they have not been probably within six, eight inches from each other as to where he's taking the shot on both ends. 23 points for Capel. 11-point lead for North Carolina. 8-14 to play.
Here we see Capel again, right at the top of the key. He's found a spot that he loves today. Just buries another one. He's six for six from three. You're talking about 18 points in an 11-point game, getting six threes from a guy that you expect to be inside. Hey, fans, do you have a question about today's ACC tournament action? Well, you can go online at the ACC.com spot and submit your question. Following this game, the best one will be answered by one of our analysts. The ACC.com, the official website of the Atlantic Coast Conference. You know, Tim, I'm going to make a, uh, a little conjecture here, and I may be wrong on this one, but Larry Shiat was really upset with the officials there, and I think the reason for it was he wanted a timeout immediately after his team had scored so that he could go ahead and set up the defense. He didn't get the timeout when he wanted it. Carolina came down and hit the three. And Coach was really hot. Billy, you look around this cavernous arena, and it is really filling up. Very few seats still available. Well, the other thing, too, that I really compliment the, the players in this game is that when you're playing in an ACC tournament, normally the crowd is very quiet because you have representation almost equally of all the schools, but they kind of only really root when their team is on the floor, particularly in a dome situation. Great pass by Morrison. Forte filling the lane. Carolina starting to pull it away. All set up by the turnover by Solomon, who really looks like he's dragging now. Scott left alone beyond the arc. That'll be last touch by Clemson. 7.39 to play, 13-point lead by Carolina. That is their largest lead. Tim, one of the differences we've seen today is an inside game. Now, watch Lang on the inside as he'll go ahead and force the defense to try to play over the top of him. The ball will swing back, and when it does, Capel, who's been outstanding here, will force the defense to come forward, which gives Capel the opportunity to go right inside to Lang, who has his man right on his back. They fight over the top. The ball swung. Perfect job by North Carolina getting the ball on the inside. There's that cross-court pass. You have to come out and respect Capel. He goes right inside the line. Good job by North Carolina. Carolina starting to distance themselves now. The lead is 13. Take a look at the Bud Light scoreboard, Billy. Some scores from last night. Here's what Clemson had to do to get in here. Just a two-point win. And today, look at this. Early in that one, seventh rank. Iowa trailing Baylor. Boys, Tennessee, a team right now that's got to start showing as is the case of Maryland and Arizona, that they're a team a lot was expected of, but they have not gotten it done. So Wisconsin there as well. Wisconsin, one of those teams that hung an early loss on Maryland. Here's Solomon in the paint. Well, Indiana gave Wisconsin a real beating a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, it's very unusual that you can pound Wisconsin because they just don't let you get away from them. Well, that committee looks at how you do early and how you do late. Late, much more important. Here's Stockman beyond the arc. Wow! This is amazing what these freshmen are doing. Clemson needs a couple more of those. Time running short with 6.45 to play. Well, and you don't know if Clemson can come out and get North Carolina. What they've forced North Carolina has come to them. Lang with a nice shot inside. That skyhook is almost unstoppable when he's hitting that. And there's a big, big turnover. Good job by Max Owen. Solomon can't hang on to it. Well, I think we're seeing now that Clemson is starting to feel the effects of last night's game. Well, that's possible, too. You know, not only having had to play a game yesterday, but considering the time that they had to recover. That game was over, what, 9.30, thereabouts? 9 o'clock. They're starting now. Had to be here early today. They're yep. starting now to lose their legs. And Carolina's making a pay. You would think that that play-in game would get the advantage of playing the last game uh, tonight as opposed to having to play the very first game. So, you know, you got to figure the guys probably cooled down somewhere around midnight, had to get up to be in here at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's a 13-3 run. Morrison trying to add to that. that foul. You know, Philly, really, you make a great point because Maryland had to come down here Wednesday. Wake Forest had to be here Wednesday. They all had to be here for practice yesterday for the media. Right. And, and it would make more sense to let them play earlier and get a team like this more rest. Well, I guess that the number one seed gets all the advantages because he gets to play the early game to have the most rest for the next one. Without a doubt. So for your season, the reason you had to play in the play-in game is another guy played better than you did. Right. Hobbs with a big rebound. Takes it back strong and is fouled. 
Uh, Hobbs sitting on the bench because of foul trouble. He was down on that bench for a long time, too, but at least a little inside presence for Clemson. You can't count on just doing it from the perimeter against a team as versatile as North Carolina. Terrific first half if you're just joining us. 50-45 was our score. Carolina led by five. Here in the second half, Clemson tiring, and North Carolina starting to really feel the tournament attitude. The Hobbs had eight rebounds in both games against North Carolina. There's Henderson sitting down. Been down since the 15-minute mark, so really a no factor here in the second half. When it was 54-54, he went out. Hobbs is going to be a good, solid power forward in this league. You pointed out, then this is a young team. Some nice personnel there to put a team around. Here's Owens. Back to Forte. Forte has his block. The geese does a good job there. Forte lowers that shoulder as he turns the corner. Probably as good as anybody around doing that, but the geese helping out from the weak side. He's had a very productive day. Those three big jump shots that he hit. A couple of good defensive plays. And it's another one. Has it blocked by the geese. doing his uh, Brendan Haywood impersonation. Oh, there's a foul by Owens. No call. Solomon can't believe it. He almost was pulled to the floor, and he goes back and smacks Owens. No call on that either. Morrison has a look at the pull the trigger. Here's Stockton with the takeaway. He's going to try to take Cable? No. Oh. Try to do too much. He has one up strong. Give Cable some credit. Cable some credit. He completely faked him out. And the fact that he would have thought that he's going to go up against the smaller man and make a defensive play. But instead, he just walked away from it. Tony Stockman, 6'1", 165-pound freshman. Matt Doherty had uh, outstanding games against Clemson and also was an outstanding player in the ACC tournament. Obviously, his team in 82 won the ACC tournament, then on to a national championship. But probably what uh, hurts him more than anything is that team on 80 in the 1984 might have been the most talented team Dean Smith ever had. Not only didn't win the ACC tournament, but didn't get to the Final Four. Scott now with 13 points. He had 10 in the first half. Only three here in the second half. You never thought of Doherty being a 20-point scorer, but his all-time best, obviously, the 28 he had against Clemson fiery competitor when this game is over he's going to go to the locker room saying the object of this game was to get to the next one and not expend a lot of energy and i'd have to say he accomplished that but as he set a pattern for this team because there'll be no more nights off in this tournament or for that matter for the rest of the year with the exception of that uh, opening round game in the ncaa tournament haywood has his shot blocked by the geese but he's fouled and that's assuming they're a one or a two seed Mr. Free Throw Shooting Expert goes to the line again. Billy, I think in that first half, Carolina did expend a lot of energy. I mean, that was a very up-tempo, fast-paced first half. But you're right, they are getting a break here in the second. Yeah, I think physically you're right, Tim. But I, I'm talking about the emotional aspect of it. I don't think that there was a lot there. Hobbs picked up the personal. It was not Nagy, so that is five on Hobbs, and he's DQ'd. So. Hobbs and Henderson both out of the ball game now. One at the 15-minute mark and one at the five-minute mark. Well, he's only a freshman, Billy. He's got a great career in front of him. The top freshman rebounder in the ACC. Scored 28 points against Virginia. We saw what he could do there. Another big day here against uh, Carolina, a team that you mentioned that he was really looking forward to playing. He leaves the game with only seven points, but a strong game inside. Well, he's averaged uh, 6.4 rebounds on the year. He's only playing 19 minutes a game, so you got to figure by next year he'll be a... 25, 26 points uh, a minute per game type player. Should have some very solid stats. How about Haywood at the line? Almost flawless. Seven of eight. Could Haywood be the Tommy Burleson of his era where not being selected all conference first team comes out and really makes his mark in the ACC tournament? Lenny Elmore always used to say, I wish they'd have voted him first team all tournament the way he played in the games against Maryland. Where he became the most valuable player two years in a row for those great state teams. McGee shot short. 
six, North Carolina. So the Tar Heels look like they will advance. Still 4-13 to play, but Capel wants his shot at the top, and they're just ignoring him. I don't know why. Tar Heels well in control. Yeah, but I mean, a look of frustration. I mean, he's only six for six from out there. Let him go ahead and take another one. Haywood back. Yeah, no easy. answer there. 16 for Brendan Haywood. The shirt pulled, looking for Solomon to get open. Good job by Haywood to come out and stop that jump shot. McGee's beyond the arc. Yes! That's four. That's four jumpers and a half. He has 11 points. That's the lead to 14. He's only plays 14 minutes a game. And, uh, he's having to play basically. Billy's another, another one of those young guys, yep. too. I mean, you look at this Clemson team. You've got Scott, who's a sophomore. Stockman, who's a freshman. Solomon's a junior. You've got Hobbs, you mentioned, a freshman. Allen's back is the only senior in the lineup on a very young team. Well, and they said McGee the uh, gained 25 pounds to get to the stature he is right now. I hate to take a look at him when they recruited him because it's not like he's a brawny guy now, but he's had a very, very solid game here. Haywood, eight for nine from the line and counting that one pair. And now it uh, yeah, you jinxed him. catches up to him. This broadcast is a copyrighted presentation. Any use of it without the express permission of Raycom, Jefferson Pilot Sports, and the ACC is prohibited. Nice follow through. 314 to play. Brendan Haywood with a strong performance here this afternoon in the quarterfinals. Carolina leads 94-79 over Clemson. North Carolina completely in control with 314 to play in the ball game. And take a look, Billy, at the Pepsi players of the game. Well, you can't fault this at all. Will Sullivan had an excellent basketball game. And Jason Capel, who really set the pace for North Carolina, particularly in that first half with his great three-point shooting, has carried that through six for six threes. I think he could have had seven for seven if they'd have passed in the ball a second or two ago that last possession because he was wide open out there. Why not let the hot, hot hand continue to shoot? Carolina coming off that 95-81 loss to Duke. The Tar Heels were shell-shocked by Duke in that game by 38 three-point attempts. And that's the way Clemson came out today, firing from beyond the arc and put up a pretty interesting first half where it was 50-45 North Carolina at the half, but now the Tar Heels have just worn the Tigers down. And I don't think it would have made that much difference as far as who would eventually won this game, but with the 15 minute at the 15 minute mark, and Henderson picked up the technical the foul and the technical foul with his team tied. That really uh, set the pace Huge. for this game. Yeah. Huge. The geese puts it on the floor, almost has it taken away. Knight left alone and can't get it to go down. And you can see no offensive rebounding whatsoever for Clemson. So if they don't bury that jumper, Carolina's off and running, just building onto this lead. And that, again, was one of the keys, Billy, in the first half. Clemson battled pretty well. They were almost even at rebounding at the half. Oh, with the takeaway and Forte with the foul call. And Larry Shiant wanted an intentional foul, but it really wasn't. What happened is that Forte's arm got caught there. But for a second, I didn't think they were going to call anything. Good anticipation by Solomon on this steal. It was right from the weak side. Forte had no idea he was there, and there's no question it was a foul. So Solomon goes to the line, and he's a very good free throw shooter, 79%. But misses the first. His high against Georgia Tech at 41 was the uh, conference high for the season. Forte right behind that with that 38-point game he had, but uh, Solomon, the leader in that respect. Man, there's two attacks, and no foul call. Curry can't believe it. Down the 220 to play in the ball game. Forte with the crossover and takes it in the paint for the easy jumper. And there's that ability to put the ball on the floor and pull up short with a 10-foot jump shot. Such a critical part of his game. 6-79 in a game that was close most of the way. Braddock beyond the arc. Just no legs left. Forte, excellent rebounding. The best, probably the best rebounding guard that Carolina has had in a long, long time. 
And again, they'll melt the clock, shorten the game. This one's in the books pretty much. 145 to play. Going out for the double team, meaning somebody's going to be open. It could be Haywood for the dunk. Curry with the lay. Nice. No movement at all now from Hunter. Larry Shia wants a timeout with 128 remaining. Well, just wanting to take this young team and explain to them where they've been this year and where they need to go to the future. Well, the Carolina fans are on their feet. Take a look at the advanced auto parts play of the game. Let's go to Jason Cable. Ball inside to Cable, but his key today has been the six of six threes. And he found a hole when Carolina went to their small offensive squad. He found a hole in that triangle of two and stepped right to the top of the key and buried those jump shots that really opened up the game for North Carolina. Beyond the arc today, he was automatic. What a game. 23 points right now for Jason Cable. 128 to play. 98-79 Tar Heels. Well, Cable's uh, big game this year was 27 against Maryland, so he's right on target there, 27 and 8. He was 10 for 14 in that game, doing even better here today. Nine rebounds for Jason Cable really did it at both ends, and he was certainly the spark plug. And, of course, I guess you'd have to say his uh, top game of the year was that triple-double he had against Buffalo with the 16, 11, and 10, 10 assists being on the end there. And he and Haywood becoming the first guys in ACC history on the, to have triple-doubles uh, by two members of the same team. Let's go over to Gil McGregor. One twenty-eight left in the game, 98-79, Carolina in control. Billy, and you're, uh, you went to the final championship game in the ACC tournament, what, three times? Right. One, two, right. during your career? Right. And what did they have, about 30,000 total for three days? I think it was like 30, about, people? Yeah, about 35,000, something like that. Those games obviously always used to be over in Raleigh. Good steal by Forte. And he takes the distance and is fouled by Nagis. Point being that there are 40,000 people here this afternoon to watch this one ACC game of the four quarterfinal game. Now that was the, that 38,000 you're talking about was for the three days. Oh, three days, <laughs> right, total. <laughs> Today in one day eclipses that. And this will be obviously the biggest attendance ever for a postseason conference tournament. Uh, in, in the history of college basketball. Is that good or bad? Well, I think it's great. I think that uh, a real testimony to the fan base of this conference uh, and, and puts them on another level. Completely sold out. 40,000 at the Georgia Dome. Joseph Forte at the line. This is the second. He really struggled today with his shot. Well, Clemson has been this year for him probably the team. He's played three games against them now and probably been the, the one team that he hasn't been able to explode against. He fires from way outside. Ooh, there's a case where Haywood said, no, Braddock, don't come in here with that stuff. I'm waiting for another block. Under a minute to play. Clemson having a tough time just getting a shot off. Good pump fake inside. Haywood wanted to block a shot so badly there. The beast got him up in the air and did a good job. 34.3 seconds left in the game. Carolina 99, Clemson 79. Carolina fans are on their feet as Matt Doherty is ready to go down to his bench and replace all his starters. Well, a good job because everybody loves to say, I played in an ACC tournament game. So here's a real good opportunity. I realize it's only for a few seconds, but uh, it's not a matter of said, well, some guy looked at you and said, did you ever get in? He said, oh, yeah, I played. Sure, I played the tournament. Are you kidding me? Dean Smith used to kid about that in some ways when people talk about a guy who played and coached in the Final Four. And although it wasn't a matter of... Uh, a uh, starting role in his part or a starring role, he could say, yes, I played in the game. Well, Michael Brooker comes in, Jonathan Holmes, Orlando Melendez, Will Johnson, all in the game now for North Carolina. 
and they can say I played in the game that was uh, attended by more people ever in the history of an ACC tournament game. So a little history going there for them. Carolina fans want the Tar Heels to get to 100 points. They're at 99 with 29 seconds left in this ball game. The shot clock is off. Well, we saw with Clemson beating North Carolina, and I think that Tim Bure made a great point that no team has ever beaten the number one team in the country after January 14th. And Clemson had more losses than anybody ever beat a number one team, so it's the biggest upset in ACC history. But that was not to be the case here today. North Carolina just too many weapons. Well, they're not going to get the 100 points, but they are going to get the win. Carolina wins it 99-81 to 81 over the Tigers of Clemson. Boy, the first half, 50 to 45, and well played back and forth it went. No lead bigger than six points. Then here in the second half, Clemson's legs just gave way, having played Florida State last night in a game, as you mentioned, Billy, that ended at 9 o'clock. And without their big people to play when Henderson got out of uh, out of the ball game and then Hobbs got in foul trouble as well, uh, not any answers for Clemson going inside against North Carolina. A team with more personnel, more experience, and obviously more skill. We talked a great deal about North Carolina saving their their legs and being ready to go all three days do you think that this was one of those games that was good for them where they oh. did not waste their legs well I, absolutely i think that and i think that that was part of the the uh the plan that matt doherty had for this team hey he's got a lot of experience in playing in acc himself and in tournament play having been an assistant out of kansas so uh, i think that he's well schooled in that regard all right, let's take you over to Gil McGregor. Thanks a lot, Tim. Big win, Coach. The first night is always the first night you've got to get through. Uh, though this team upset you guys, you came out ready for them. Yeah, well, uh, it was a tough game to play. They're a good team, and uh, we had to grind, ground it, grind it out, and I thought we did, and I thought the key was our defense in the second half. I thought we put a pretty quick lineup in there that guarded them, and then it gave us some opportunities at the other end. When you put a game in perspective like this, you got to get through this game. But of course, you're thinking about the rest of this tournament and past this tournament. How did you prepare for it? What did you tell your players? Well, it was kind of hard to prepare because we didn't know who we were going to play till last night. But I wanted to save our legs this week. I thought we were tired against Duke, and I thought we uh, we saved, try to save our legs and get a lot of shots up so they were confident shooting the ball. And I thought we shot the ball fairly well. And although you say you don't know who to prepare for, you don't care about who plays tomorrow against Carolina. No, you know I don't. Uh, we have no control over that. We can only control what we do and we'll need to get some rest and come out and be ready to play a tough basketball game. Thanks a lot, Coach. Right, thank you. Tim, a good win for Carolina against a team that upset them one of the biggest upsets as Billy Packer said ever in the ACC, but they were ready for Clemson today. Well, they certainly were, Gil. Capel at 23, Lang 16, Haywood 17, Forte 15. They spread it out. Virginia's on the floor. We'll be back right after this.